Okay, so let's see. Yesterday we did stuff on right triangles. So if you were absent, you can either get that from somebody else or come get it from us. And then we did stuff on Pythagorean theorem. Um, I want to go into the extra examples right now. And I'm going to put a 45 degrees here and three square root of two out there. And an X right here. So, this is like one of the problems from yesterday. And I, and I did get quite a bit of questions on it. I kind of put it there just to kind of see, you know, if you would kind of take it to the next level and figure it out. I know I had a couple figure it out and some figure it out with a couple hints. But then I think some of you, maybe you haven't gotten into it yet or you just haven't asked. So, yeah, we're in the extra, we're in the extra examples piece, and I, I, I'm going to use the top today for something, so I kind of just went to the bottom part, although you could do it wherever. Um, so, this triangle, it's, we don't have enough yet to do Pythagorean theorem on, but I know that my triangle has to add up to 180, right? So what do I know, what could I, what would I figure out that this angle right here is? 45. 45. Now, I have two angles that are the same. Maybe if I put it like this and talk about those angles as base angles, what do you know about this triangle? How are they the same angle? Because they're the same measurement because my triangle has to add up to 180. If this is 90 and this is 45, the other one has to be 45 also in order to make it add to 180. So whenever you have a triangle with the two base angles that are congruent, that's an isosceles. Kind of squished it. Oh, you can't see it. That's an isosceles triangle. And that means that also your two sides that those angles come from are congruent. So in this picture, it means that those two sides are congruent. So if this side is X, what is this side? It's X also. So we've been using Pythagorean theorem, right? Well, let's just see how this plays out. X squared plus X squared equals four, no, three, square root of two squared, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, well, it's different than what we've done before, how the things have shown up here. But X squared plus X squared is 2X squared. Because there's understood ones in front of these. Now, how do we do this? Square root of, no, no step ahead of myself. 3 square root of 2 squared is the same as 3 square root of 2 times 3 square root of 2, right? 3 times 3 is 9. 
and then the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2 times 2, which is 4, which is 2. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. Whenever you multiply a square root by itself, it basically undoes the square root. So this now is 18. Continue to solve for x, divide both sides by 2. So x squared equals 9. Now in our last step, take the square root of both sides. So x equals 3. Okay, any questions there? Can I please have phones put away? Imagine. Okay, let's go to the 454591. So now we're going to what is called special triangles. The 45, 45, 90. looks like the one we were just doing, huh? So there's really a different method that we can use on a 45, 45, 90. Um, and it's, we take this triangle and call both of its legs one. If we call both of its legs one and we use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the third side, this third side is the square root of 2. This is what we call our unit triangle, meaning that one of the sides has a length of one unit. Now, every other triangle that has the same angle measurements is going to be similar to this triangle. So we did similar triangles last chapter. And what did we use to solve for sides on similar triangles? What was that? What were we using? We set up, I don't know if you know where I'm going. We set up proportions and then we did cross multiplying, right? So, This triangle is similar to this one. Okay. So we can do just like we did last chapter with similar triangles and set up a proportion to be able to solve for these missing sides. So let's do y first. I can go y over 12. Just an unknown side over a known side. So this is the leg on the left over the hypotenuse. So I want to pick the same pieces from here. The leg on the left over the hypotenuse. Okay. Now we have a proportion. We solve proportions by cross-multiplying. 
So we have square root of 2 times y equals 12. Now what? Trying to get that y by itself. So let's divide by the square root of 2. It might look a little funny. That's okay. So our 2's cancel there, right? Our square root of 2's, they're gone. And what's left is y equals 12 over square root of 2. Now, technically we should get that square root of 2 out of the denominator. But I believe that we're, this program we're using is allowing us to leave it there. So we're going to leave it there unless we find out something different. Okay. So take a look at that. Are there any questions there? So that's why. Why are we looking at me? Are we okay? What is our question? No? Okay. So now we have to solve for x. So do I do the same thing? So let's do the hypotenuse over kind of the horizontal leg. 12 over x equals what piece is from here? Same thing, 12 over x, square root of 2 over 1. So you're pulling the same pieces. Cross multiply it. x times the square root of 2. 12 times 1 is 12. Divide by the square root of 2. equals 12 over the square root of 2. Oh, wait, they're the same? Is that, will that always happen? It better. Do you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle? The two legs are always the same value. So technically, did we have to do this again? No. Once you know one of them, you know both of them. Okay? So, just making that point there. Okay, let's look at the next one. So, solve for x for me. Solve for x. You should be saying done. You know what it is? Your two sides that form the right angle in a 45, 45, 90 are always the same value. So technically now we could use Pythagorean theorem on this, but I want to use special triangles. So I'm going to say 5 over y. equals, now what, what are the corresponding pieces on the unit triangle? 5 over y, so it's the leg on the left over the hypotenuse, so it's 1 over square root of 2. Finish solving that. Cross multiply. So it's our hypotenuse is five square root of two. You'll notice a lot of square root of two showing up in a forty five, forty five, ninety triangle. Okay, any questions there?
Okay. Now, one of the things you want to do with these, if, if the triangle that you're trying to solve for, like this one, if it were twisted around in a different position, you would want to redraw this kind of twisted in the same position and number the sides around it so that you can easily find the corresponding pieces. Okay, so any questions there? Okay, let's look at the 30, 60, 90 one. So flip, flip the page to the 30, 60, 90. You can cross that off at the top where it says tab of tab four. It doesn't mean anything to you, but this is another special triangle. And this is our unit triangle again that we're going to use as the similar triangle to the ones that we're trying to solve for. So this side is a 1, the hypotenuse is a 2, and this is a square root of 3. So if we use Pythagorean theorem on this, just to kind of show why we pick those numbers, it's 1 squared plus square root of 3 squared equals 2 squared. 1 squared is 1. What's the square root of 3 squared? 3. And 2 squared is... Four. So since both sides are equal, those numbers really do form a right triangle. Okay? So that's just kind of FYI. We're, you know, this is what we'll always use for our unit triangle for a 30, 60, 90. Opposite the 30 is our shortest side. It's the smallest angle and always opposite the smallest angle is the shortest side. What is the largest angle in this picture? Which one? What's the biggest angle? There's no, the biggest angle measurement. It's in degrees. It would be the 90. Opposite the largest angle is the longest side. And that longest side is also our hypotenuse. This other side is kind of our middle side. Maybe we call it the third side. Are you guys with me? you to have a seat, Israel. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to have a straw triangle in here real quick. I'm going to draw a 30, 60, 90, another one of our special triangles, 30, 60. It's called a 30, 60, 90 because those are the angle measurements that we have. And let's see, I'm going to call this side X and this side the 10.
these two triangles are similar, which means we can set up a proportion using their corresponding sides. So, let's just go the side on the left over the hypotenuse. X over 10 equals, which would be the corresponding ones from up here. one over two. They're in the same position, right? Cross multiply this. 2x equals 10. Divide by 2. So x equals 5. So this side length is 5. in there. Now, what if I put a Y down here? Set up a proportion again. 10 over Y equals what are the corresponding sides from up above? Two over a bit, ten over y would be two over square root of three. It's like if I slid this up on top, right? It's kind of like you can think of it as it's the two sides that make that thirty degree angle, right? Cross multiply this. 2 times y is 2y. Square root of 3 times 10 is 10 square root of 3. Sorry, I'm getting a little small there. And divide by 2. So y equals 5 square root of 3. Do two more just to make sure. Okay, so this one, it's, remember I mentioned that if your triangle wasn't facing the same way, we should draw it facing the same way, our unit triangle? Yes? Remember I said that? Okay, well I did a few minutes ago. So I want to draw a unit triangle facing the same way as this one. So I'm just going to draw a little triangle up here. This is my 30. So looking back up to the top, here's my 30. Opposite the 30 is my 1. So if I go from the 30 across the triangle, I get a 1. So here, from the 30 across the triangle is a 1. What is across from the 90 degree angle? 2. So across from my 90 is a 2. And then what's my third side? It's the square root of 3. So that's what I always do. I kind of go across from my 30, I put a 1. Across from the right angle, put a 2. And then the other one, the leftover one, is your square root of 3. So let's solve for x first. So I'm going to use x and the 8. So the third side and the short side, you know, the two sides that make that right angle, x over 8 
Now what two sides correspond from that unit triangle? The square root of 3 and the 1. Is that what you guys said? So give me a little thumbs up if you see why I picked square root of 3 over 1. Okay, if you don't, give me a little thumbs down. Okay. So cross multiply these. X equals 8 square root of 3. So that side is X square root of 3, is 8 square root of 3. Okay, can you, do you think you can do side Y? Do the hypotenuse. So y over 8 equals 2 over 1, cross multiply it, y equals 16. Let's look at one more here. So I need to draw my unit triangle facing the same way this one is. So it's easy to pull what sides match up. So this is my 30. So across from my 30, put a 1. Across from the right angle, put a 2. And then my third side is the square root of 3. That's my unit triangle. So let's do X first. So I can do, I'm going to do X over 6 square root of 3. And which sides correspond from my unit triangle? 1 and, one and the square root of 3. Because it's the two sides that make that right angle. So the 1 and the x are in the same position. The 6 square root of 3 and the square root of 3 are in the same position. Then you cross multiply. So square root of 3x equals 6 square root of 3. Divide by the square root of 3. So x equals, oh, those cancel. Take a few minutes and solve for y for me. Okay, so how did you start it off? Six square root of three over y. You could have done it the other way too. You could have put y over the square root of three and then you just would be opposite what we put here also. So. 
6 square root of 3 over y, the 6 square root of 3 corresponds with the square root of 3, and the y corresponds with the 2. Cross multiply. So that's 6 times 2 is 12. Divide by the square root of 3. So y equals 12. So this side is 6 and this side is 12. questions up. Okay. We're going to stop here for a